lovely people you are welcome to my channel thanks so much for your support i really appreciate it today too i am here to give you a summary of our lesson that is lesson three and it is titled all future generations all future generations please if you are watching me and you have not yet subscribed consider subscribing the memory verse is taken from or the memory test is taken from Genesis 6, 8, and I read, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. We are grateful, our Father in heaven, for such a great opportunity to study your word. We need your presence, your guidance, and your teachings. Please bless us with them in Jesus' name. Amen. The Sabbath afternoon introduction is teaching us that the way bacteria increases or spread quickly, or multiplies rapidly is the same way sin also increases and multiplies quickly and rapidly and so the whole of this week we are going to look at how sin generated from time to time and then what God did and the covenant God had with Noah as well as the future generation. Okay, the Sunday says the sin principle, the sin principle, and the Sunday lesson is based on Genesis 6, 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. God have made, and so God saw that sin has increased to the extent that every intent of the heart of man it's wickedness, nothing good. Even up to now, our hearts is full of wickedness. Human beings, we are very wicked. May God have mercy on us. When God created things, everything was perfect. Everything was beautiful. Everything was in order. God said, and it was good. So how come things changed and everything got deteriorated? And sin has taken over the whole world. And so in Genesis 3, we saw that when Adam and Eve at the fruit, disobey God. From there, Cain and Abel also. And then from there, Lamech and all, all these sins started and then go to Noah's time. But during Noah's time, God saw that it has become very serious that he needs to do something. He cannot stay or live with it again. It has become too much and so something needs to be done. When we read Genesis 6 verses 11, it reads, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And so it wasn't just human hearts, which was very wicked or full of wickedness. The earth was full or was filled with violence, violence here and there. Every sin we can think of was what was going on in the time of Noah. Genesis 6, 5 and 11 did not arise in a vacuum. There was a history before them. This terrible result had a cause. Sin progressively got worse. It tends to do that. Sin is not like a cut or a wound with some automatic built-in process that brings healing. So it, God didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to destroy the world with flood. But because he has he had been patient for some time and now is getting out of hand. On the contrary, if left unchecked, sin multiplies never satisfied until it leads to rain and death. One does not have to imagine life before the flood to see this principle operating. It exists all around us, even now. And so when we refuse to put up measures to check sin or to, 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 to stop sin, it will get out of hand. And so God realized that no, something needs to be done. And so even in our time, we can tell that some has destroyed everything. And even our parents, when you don't put up measures to check certain attitude or behaviors of your children, they get out of hand. And so God needed to do something, needed to destroy the world at that time with flood. But God wasn't just interested in destroying but he was also interested in saving sinners, you and I. We are moving to Monday, and the Monday lesson says the man Noah. And the Monday lesson is based on Genesis 6, 9. Genesis 6, 9. And I read, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Amen. Noah was a just man, perfect. And he also walked with God. Can same be said 
about us. Does it mean that when we are talking of for all have sin, Noah is in part? No. Noah is part of for all have sin. He also needed grace just as much as we also need grace now. And so Noah worked with God in all the grace, in all that. The Bible can confirm that Noah was a just man. So you and I, we need grace. It is only the grace of God that we can live a perfect, decent life. So you and I, too, when we look into our life, can it be said that we are also just, we are walking with God, just as it was said about Noah or not? Noah was someone who had a saving relationship with the Lord. He was someone whom God could work with, someone who would listen to him, obey him, and trust in him. That is why the Lord was able to use Noah to fulfill his purpose and why Peter in the New Testament called him a preacher of righteousness. That's Second Peter 2, 5. Amen. And so Noah was someone God could work with. You and I too. Yes, it is by grace. Can it be said that God can work with us? Thus, we need to understand that however blameless and righteous Noah was, he was still a sinner who needed the unmerited favor of his God. In that sense, Noah is no different from any of us who seek earnestly to follow the Lord. Noah is not different from us. So if Noah was able to walk with God, if the Bible was able to confirm that Noah was a just man, then we too sin can be said about us. If we allow ourselves, we move to Tuesday and Tuesday says covenant with Noah, covenant with Noah. And it's based on Genesis 6 verse 18 and I read, but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife and your son's wives with you. Amen. And so God said to Noah, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. And my covenant is that you and your family, you are going to come into the ark. So what was Noah's responsibility here? His responsibility was to obey. Obey God. And God said, my covenant. My covenant, not our covenant. It is me who is taking that initiative to save you and your family. And so yours is to what? To obey. And so in the covenant of salvation, the role of man is to obey. They have their part to do. And if they do not do it, the covenant is broken. If the covenant is broken, they are the ultimate losers. For in the end, they are the beneficiaries of the covenant. And so the covenant was about salvation. What is God's own benefit? What does God benefit from? No benefit. Most of the benefit is man. And so if um, Noah and his family have said, oh, we are not going to enter the ark. Well, they are going to be part of those who will be destroyed. The benefits only God gets from it. He says he benefits in that those whom he loves will be given eternal life. No small satisfaction for the Lord. But that is not to say that he benefits in the same way we, on the receiving end of the same covenant benefit. And so God's benefit is that the people he loved, they will get salvation and he will be happy. Oh, my people are saved. They listen to my, my voice and all that. But hey, what we benefit is more. We benefit salvation. And so when we decide not to listen to God, it is our own cause. So we lose. God doesn't lose anything. It doesn't mean that when we lose our life, God doesn't get hurt. But hey, what can he do? He can't do anything about it. And he will not lose. The benefit, the greater part is us. And so let's take advantage of God's covenant of salvation and allow him to establish his covenant with us. And as this is a sign of the rainbow, sign of the rainbow. And it's based on Genesis 9, 12 and 13. And I read, and God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Amen. God said it's going to be a sign of covenant between me and the earth, and not just Noah, future generations. And so God's word is for all of us. And in this covenant of God setting his bow or rainbow in the clouds, man is not doing anything. What part are we playing? We are not playing any part. And this covenant is for all. Whether you obey or you don't obey him, it is for all. And so when it rains and after rainbow comes, both sinners, 
and righteous enjoy that beautiful colors we all become amazed when we see these beautiful colors in the skies and look at and look at them and enjoy them and even to the center most people organizations are using these colors as their symbols as their whatever whatever these organizations are not only christians most of them are not christians some are called gays and all these people are using these symbols to signify something for themselves the Lord said he would use the rainbow as a sign of my covenant. How interesting that he would use the word covenant here. For in this case, the covenant differs from how it is used elsewhere. In contrast to the covenant with Abraham or the Sinai covenant, there is no specific obligation expressed on the part of those who would benefit from the covenant. And so even Noah doesn't have to do anything. So this covenant is God who is setting to show that I'm not going to destroy the earth with water again. And so whether you believe in him or not, he is going to fulfill that covenant and you have no part to play, even Noah. So so that I could not come, that covenant will still be there. God will continue to fulfill that. Thursday says only Noah was left. Only Noah was left. And it's based on Genesis 7:23. And I read, he blotted out every living thing that was upon the face of the ground, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the air. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those that were with him in the ark. So apart from Noah, his family and the animals that went into the ark with him, everything God was destroyed with the flood. And so we call those people, Noah and his people, and the animals as what? Remnant. Those who were left. They were the ones who remained on earth to continue filling this earth. And so remnant has been in the Bible and we can find it in so many places, such as Genesis 45, 7, which says, and, and God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors and when we come to isaiah 4 3 it also says and he who is left in zion and remains in jerusalem will be called holy everyone who has been recorded for life in jerusalem in that day the lord will extend a son yet a second time to recover the remnant which is left of his people isaiah 11 11 and so in the old testament we can always see the word remnant god's remain people at the time of the flood the creator of the world became the judge of the world the nearing world why judgment raised the question whether all life on earth even human life would be destroyed if not who would be the survivors who would be the remnant and in this case Noah and his family were the remnant of God. Noah's salvation was linked to God's covenant with him, a covenant that originated and was executed by a God of mercy and grace. They survived only because of what God did for them. However important their cooperation was, whatever Noah's covenant obligations were, and no matter how faithfully he executed them, it's only hope was in god's mercy amen his only hope was in god's mercy just as you and i no matter what it will take the mercies of god the grace of god his love is kind for us to be what to be saved and even the faithfulness we portray the good things we do are because god's grace is guiding us to be good we move to friday and friday says the summary says in this week's study, we have noted that the covenant God made with Noah are the first to be discussed explicitly in the Bible. They display his gracious interest in the human family and his desire to enter into a saving relationship with them. God reaffirmed his covenant with Noah and it was Noah's commitment to God that shielded him from the prevailing apostasy and eventually saved him and his family from the devastating judgment of the flood. And so God takes the initiative to make a covenant with man. Just as Noah obeyed, we too we are to be faithful and obedient so that this covenant 
will be fulfilled. Sister White says in the story of redemption, page 71, that this symbol, the rainbow in the clouds, is to confirm the belief of all and establish their confidence in God. For it is a token of divine mercy and goodness to man that although God has been provoked to destroy the earth by the flood, yet his mercy still encompasses the earth. Amen. And so the rainbow shows God's mercy, his love, his kindness towards man that no matter how bad we are, he still loves us and wouldn't want to destroy totally. He still wants to save sinners. God is ready to save you and I. What are we waiting for? Let us obey and live. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you. Subscribe, like, and share the video. Bye-bye.